Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Global Healthcast, brought to you by Global Health Press. In this broadcast series, we talk once a week about all type of globally relevant infectious diseases. I am Joe Schmidt, and with me is Dr. Melvin Sanikas. Good morning, Melvin. Good morning, Professor Schmidt, and hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. What we talk about today is, again, the COVID-19 update and news. The second topic is, can scientists and physicians make a difference in debunking fake science? Then Melvin will present to you mild respiratory SARS-CoV-2 infection may cause cellular dysregulation and myeloss in the brain. This is important. It really has implications for your life if you are affected by this. And then I talk about vaccination gaps and how they may affect outbreaks in the future. But let's start first with Melvin and COVID-19 update. Melvin. Thank you, Professor. So this is from the WHO COVID-19 situation report released this week, last Wednesday. So again, it shows that globally, the number of new weekly cases has continued to decline since the peak in January 2022. And as of June 2022, uh, over 536 million confirmed cases have been reported and over 6.3 million deaths have been reported globally. So these trends should be interpreted with caution though, because several countries have been progressively changing their testing strategies, leading to lower overall numbers of tests performed and consequently lower numbers of cases detected. And at the country level, the highest number of new weekly cases were reported in some countries like the US, China, um, Brazil, and France. Melvin, I'm impressed that numbers are going down. Unfortunately, I'm living in Germany and two of my best friends just came down with COVID, living in the same small town. <laughs> and I never had that before, that COVID came that close to me. But look here, different from what you say, COVID is going up in Germany. Yeah, um, in Germany, COVID infections are increasing with, I think, over 63,000 new infections um, on average each day. And that's around 25% of the peak. The highest daily average reported was um, in March this year. And during that time, there were over 240,000 cases um, reported each day. And yes, you're right. Um, globally, the cases are going down. But if you look at the countries, um, at the country level, Germany is one of those countries where cases are increasing, unfortunately. Yeah. Look, I guess one of the big disadvantages of all these data on cases reported is that there is no denominator. Mm -hmm. And whoever is tested, it may be a party goer. It may be somebody who wants to go out for vacation and needs a test. And then you get not incidences of disease, but you get meaningless data. You just get, you know, positive tests, but it's not even cases, right? It's exactly. These are not all COVID cases. So do you think there will in the future be a way to really come to disease incidences like a denominator and a clear-cut case definition so that you really know if cases go up or down? Well, ideally, that should be the case, right? But um, I'm not sure if that can be done. Uh, people have been saying this about influenza as well, right? Before COVID, people were saying that, you know, to really look at the burden of influenza every year, we should do this. But it seems like <laughs> there is a will, but uh, people don't have the capacity, I guess, or the resources to do it. Yeah. I have a challenge for you. How do you interpret this map which by the size of the circles here indicates the number of cases. How do you interpret this? This is a bit tricky because if you really think about it, the number of um, positive cases in these countries will depend again, as I've mentioned earlier, the number of tests that you perform, right? So I guess if you, if you perform less tests, then you will have uh, less positive uh, results. And these countries are not doing the same number of tests each day. Um, you look at Ukraine, for example, we know what's happening in Ukraine and we see here that there are very few cases. I don't think it's because there are no cases or very few cases in Ukraine. It's just that they have other problems at the moment. Um, and Germany, you see a lot of cases, but then Germany is doing more tests than Poland, for example. So all these things are 
um, making it difficult to really interpret what we see here. Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, very good. Let's jump to the next topic, and that is very good news on the questions if scientists and medical experts can impact public beliefs in vaccines. This is from a very nice study from Italy, and they address the question if expert endorsement can increase effectiveness of debunking messages about COVID-19 vaccines. You all know these stupid messages on COVID-19 and vaccines and infectious diseases in general. And uh, the question is, is there a difference if medical experts give the right messages? And uh, what they did is they had a sample of more than 2,000 people in Italy, and they asked them in a longitudinal study um, if they have certain beliefs about vaccines, and they gave messages to these people. Uh, and the messages came from non-medical people, that was the control group, or from medical people, from scientists, that was the experimental group. And this is really the nice thing of this study. It is two groups that are compared. One has the real intervention and the other one, so to speak, has a placebo. So you can really compare if the expert message makes a difference between any media message that does not come from medical experts. And 10 days after messaging, the sampled people were asked in their beliefs and in their attitudes towards vaccination. So that is really a nice study. As a result, there was no increase in vaccination behavior, but the experimental group had higher intentions to vaccinate and more positive vaccine use. There was a dose response effect. The more messages people received from medical experts, the higher was the vaccination intention. That is indicative of a cause effect. Mm -hmm. So the, the messages were really the cause of the difference. If you have a higher dose, you see more. That, that is very, very important when it comes to if, um, assessing causality. Multiple exposures may be critical for debunking messages. And significant effects were um, found participants uh, independent of participants' trust towards science. The conclusion is that scientists and medical experts are not simply a generally trust vocabulary, but also a well-suited messenger in contrasting disinformation during vaccination campaigns. Melvin, this is good news for you, right? You're one of the stars in Twitter and LinkedIn and all the social media. You make a difference. Yes, it's good news for all of us trying to really do something about the the nonsense out there in social media, which is a lot. I guess uh, speaking to someone who has more than 40,000 followers on Twitter alone, I guess very often it, it's frustrating to be on Twitter to see all the negative uh, messages out there. Yes, definitely. I mean, that's for a different global health cast topic, I guess, but it's Twitter is really full of uh, negativity and, and vile messages, and I think that's how the platform works. It triggers yeah. people. Yeah. And you still will continue. I mean, this is the news why you should continue, right? Yes. And for the others out there who are doing the same thing, whether it be on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or Instagram, I think you should continue because at least you know that what you're doing makes a difference. Yeah, thank you for this great message. And why don't you continue with SARS-CoV-2 and the brain? Yes, this is a an interesting preprint in BioArchive from investigators in uh, in the US. So some of them are from Stanford, from Yale, from Mount Sinai, and and the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. So we know that those who had COVID sometimes experience symptoms that last for months, right? And after, um, and, and some of them even have experienced lingering neurological symptoms, including impairment in attention, problems with concentration, problems with speed of information processing and memory. And this long COVID cognitive syndrome shares many features with the syndrome of cancer therapy related cognitive impairment or CRCI. So in this study, the authors look at um, mice, a mice model of infection limited to the respiratory system. They found that mild COVID could result in a multicellular dysregulation in the brain and persistent neuroinflammatory response 
including reactivity of sensitive white matter microglia, profound changes in cytokines within the CSF, the cerebrospinal fluid, and decreased hippocampal neurogenesis. And it will be interesting to find these changes in COVID patients too. So just for me, the message of this study is that avoid COVID as much as you can, because even mild COVID can result in these kinds of uh, effects in the brain. My, Melvin, this is important, uh, important information. I received four doses by now. Uh, I still may come down with COVID and I just can hope that there will be no um, cytokine dysregulation in my brain and no brain changes, right? I mean, there's nothing you can do at this point, right? It's just informative what happens if, if you get COVID, right? Exactly. And, and maybe to remind people that if you're still worried about vaccination because of what you heard from social media, that's wrong. We have to be worried about COVID and not the vaccine. Yeah, maybe as some people suggested before, we may have COVID long-term sequence outbreaks after COVID. Yes, it's definitely possible. Yeah, very interesting. Nice study, thanks for telling us all about it. And I'm going on now with vaccination gaps. It is all about measles, but I guess this is just the example because many vaccine doses have not been given during the two years of the COVID pandemic. Mm. And measles is a nice example because the basic reproductive rate of measles is 16 to 18, which means if nobody had measles or measles vaccination in a population, one patient with measles will give the disease to 16 to 18 others. So it is really spreading like crazy. It is one of the most contagious diseases, respiratory diseases that we know about. And in order to make measles disappear, you need a vaccine uptake of 95%. This is why it is important to have a high vaccine uptake. It is the basic reproductive rate is extremely high. Now, routine measles vaccination dropped in the United States to 92%. And here they did an immunity estimation for children 0 to 18 years. They looked at the number of subjects vaccinated with, against measles, and basically the results are that there are currently 9 million susceptible measles children in the United States, or 13%. This is 87% immunity, and this is well below the 95% that is needed. With the pandemic, looking at pandemic rates, this goes to 21%, one out of five. If a catch-up would be given, that would go back to 13% not protected. And if you take vaccine hesitancy, like people concerned about vaccination, if this is really something that will make an impact in the United States, again, one out of five children may not be protected from measles in the near future. The conclusions are that measles immunity already is below the herd immunity threshold in the United States. And if pandemic era reductions are not rectified, immunity will decline further and we will see outbreaks. So I just said that we may have a, um, that we may have a pandemic after COVID, uh, long-term long -term consequences of COVID pandemic. But in addition, we may see many infectious diseases recurring uh, in outbreaks and measles is one of the most dangerous ones. So this is the main message here. Melvin, any views on this one or Elliot, any challenges or additional information? No, uh, Professor, I think this is also seen in some of the, the diseases like tuberculosis. Uh, I've read reports showing that many people who were supposed to get the BCG vaccine or people who were supposed to go to TB treatment centers to get their treatments were not able to do so because of uh, the, the COVID pandemic where, where there were lockdowns and there were people who were not able to go there just because um, everything was closed and there were no healthcare workers in, the, in those cities. So we will be seeing many other diseases resurging um, even after this pandemic is over. Yeah, unfortunately, in any event, uh, we talked today about COVID-19. Globally, the numbers are going down 
depending on the country, they may be going up. And what we would really like to see is true incidence data, defined disease cases in a defined population over time. That would be helpful and that's what we need. Scientists, physicians can make a difference in debunking fake science. This is good news for all of us who are working in this field against the everyday frustration with stupid information from social media. Melvin nicely presented you that even mild respiratory SARS infections may cause damage to your brain. And we don't know yet what this may mean for the future of the people who are infected. And I presented you finally that there is a measles vaccination gap in the United States and likely elsewhere. And we discussed that it may well be that we will see many infectious diseases research in the near future as vaccination uptake was not where it should be or where it has been in the past. With this, uh, Melvin, we have a final joke of the week. Yes, uh, this is our joke for the week. Um, and you will see here a man trying to um, avoid the sun, right? Even if he is wearing a cap. And obviously, if he wore the cap correctly, he would not need to cover his um, eyes. And so this is a hat fail, and it's related to um, what's happening with, with COVID cases, because majority of COVID cases are not failures of vaccine, but failure to vaccinate. We, we have vaccines since the beginning of 2021. Um, we now have over 36 COVID vaccines approved worldwide, and 11 of them have uh, WHO EUL. We have lots of vaccines and we have lots of doses, but still some people are not getting it. Some people are not getting boosters and we're just complaining that COVID cases are going up. Um, and, you know, this is basically um, what, what's happening to, to the world at the moment. We have all the tools that we need. We have vaccines, we have treatments, but it's, they're not being used effectively and efficiently like this yeah. hat. I guess the short message again is Vaccine failures are not relevant, whereas failures to vaccinate have a big impact. Yep. This was our Global Healthcast on June 24th of 2022. Please like, share, and leave your comments below. And thanks for joining us today. I am Joe Schmidt. And I am Melvin Sanikas. Thank you very much. And have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.